NATO is developing sixth-generation fighters. Russia, beware. The confrontation and contradictions between the West and the East are becoming more and more acute every day, and the war in Ukraine is only the beginning of a global conflict. Just like in ancient times, everything's decided by force in the modern world. Who has the most powerful and advanced weapons? Aviation plays an important role in the issue of weapons because whoever controls the sky controls the world. It's for the purpose of better control of the airspace that sixth-generation fighters are being developed, automated unmanned systems that are not limited to maneuverability and speed by the human factor and are included in the overall computer system for controlling combat operations. How many fighters are being prepared? Four fighters are being tested, and if we add the project from Japan, we can say that five sixth-generation fighters are being tested simultaneously. Today, we want to find out which fighter is the most advanced, why sixth-generation fighters are considered promising, and what their characteristics and areas of influence are. The United States first developed the fifth-generation F-22 and Raptor fighter aircraft, which are still considered the most advanced in the modern world. The United States also created the F-35 Lightning II, the most mass-produced fifth-generation fighter jet. But paradoxically, this does not allow the United States to take a leading position in the development of next-generation fighters. Even though the U.S. has such leading systems for modernizing military equipment as the Predator and Lightning, it still often runs into problems with setting up financial, material, and human resources, which still take too much time. So let's talk about another fighter jet manufacturer, BAE Systems Tempest, which combines British, Italian, and Swedish companies. What about Japan, which is known in this field? Japan has not produced a single combat aircraft for decades. Its last experience was the F-2 fighter bomber, which is a powerful copy of the American F-16. Given this situation, it'll take them a lot of time and effort to realize their sixth-generation FX fighter project in addition, France and Germany, which have really great experience in aircraft construction, can spend a lot of money on the project. It's time to learn more about the Franco-German Spanish Future Combat Air Systems FCAS for short, project. Why are so many nations, including the Germans, French, Spanish, British, Swedish, Italians, plus the Japanese, spending billions of dollars to develop their sixth-generation fighter jets instead of joining a joint project with the United States and then buying ready-made aircraft as is currently happening with the F-35 Lightning II. You might think it's because they want to prove to the world that there's still great aviation powers that cannot be matched. But the reason lies on the surface. It's a fear of the future. We all remember how U.S. President Donald Trump loudly stated that he was thinking about his country's withdrawal from NATO and that this organization has no future. Meanwhile, the Russians are already successfully testing their fifth-generation Su-57 fighter jet, and their fourth-generation fighters plus the Su-35 have been confidently flying the skies for a long time. Just imagine the reaction of European countries to such developments. Although the United States did not withdraw from NATO, a host of new global disasters and tensions have emerged that require allied countries to work as hard as possible to protect themselves. The successful completion of the development of a new European fighter aircraft is also beneficial for Ukraine, as its adoption in the EU will free up the existing fighter aircraft models currently in use in Ukraine's allied countries. So what exactly is FCAS, and why is it considered the most advanced? It's because the dynamics of its development are impressive. The work on the project of the Franco-German next-generation fighter began after French Defense Minister Florence Parley and then-German Defense Minister Ursula von der Leyen signed an agreement in April 2018 within the framework of the Future Air Combat System FACS. Thus, already in 2018, on October 23rd, at the Euronaval 2018 exhibition in Paris, the French company Dassault Aviation presented its own development of a sixth-generation fighter. The appearance of model resembled a cross between the American F-22 and the Russian Su-57. A huge privilege of these fighters was the announcement that they are unmanned systems, which, according to the French, will improve and make them better than the American F-35 and F-22 fighters. Over time, other participants began to join the project. Thus, on February 15, 2019, Spain joined the project. It's planned that the aircraft, which will replace the French Dassault Rafale, and Eurofighter Typhoon will be jointly developed by Airbus and Dassault Aviation. 
The project budget is almost 100 billion euros, and both companies will participate in the development of the aircraft with a 50% share. Then at the Le Bourget Air Show, which opened on June 17, 2019, a model of a completely different machine, similar to the YF-23 prototype, was shown. At the start of the fifth-generation F-22 Raptor program, there were initially two prototypes, the YF-22 created by a team of Lockheed, Boeing, and General Dynamics, and the YF-23, the brainchild of Northrop and McDonnell Douglas. The YF-22 won the competition, however, the YF-23 won over the future F-22 Raptor in terms of the key requirement of providing supersonic cruising speed without using an afterburner. It showed a speed of Mach 1.8 while the YF-22 reached only Mach 1.58, and that was only on the afterburner. The show also demonstrated a model of a remote carrier, a UAV, that will accompany the unmanned aerial vehicle, creating a swarming concept, a fighter plus several UAVs that perform reconnaissance and strike functions. A similar system has already been implemented by the Russians in their fifth-generation Su-57 fighter, and the same concept is present in their new Su-70 drone created using stealth technologies which is already being tested. Time goes on, and it often becomes clear that certain ideas cannot be realized for various reasons. So now the FCAS developers are leaning towards a manned version rather than an unmanned one. Why? The main reason for the idea of a manned version is the impossibility of achieving satisfactory autonomy parameters in 2030 to 2040. Thus, we currently have a program concept in the form of a two-seater aircraft. The crew of a manned aircraft includes a pilot and a drone swarm operator. According to this idea, the main load will be carried by inexpensive and simple unmanned mules equipped with sensors and weapons, as well as connected by secure information channels. At the presentation, the new aircraft was simply called New Fighter, a test flight expected around 2027 and commissioned in 2040. An important advantage of the new fighter jet should be the new ISR Intelligence Surveillance Reconnaissance System. Some examples of information obtained by ISR systems include optical radar or infrared images and electronic signals. Accurate ISR data is crucial for high-quality intelligence on enemy threats to improve the effectiveness of military operations. At the same time, the fighter will be equipped with a Zephyr-type HASP High Altitude Pseudo Satellite System which is designed to provide information to the fighter from its onboard radars that scan the battlefield from high altitudes. The developers are also working on a variant of a transport aircraft that will carry reconnaissance and strike UAVs in its bosom, which will play into the hands of a situation where it encounters a serious enemy air defense system. To overcome this problem, the fighters will be deployed in the aforementioned swarm pattern together with the fighter, which will lead to overall coordination. At the same time, some of the drones in the swarm will engage in electronic warfare, while others will directly engage air defense targets, helping to punch through the necessary path. An A330-based long-range radar detection and control aircraft was also added, which in this case plays the role of an Astrobus-based satellite signal repeater. The French company Safran, the German company MTU Aero, and ITP, which is the Spanish subsidiary of Rolls-Royce, are negotiating the development of the engine for FCAS. Safran will design and integrate the engine as well as build the combustion chamber, high-pressure turbine, and afterburner. In turn, MTU Aero engines will build the low- and high-pressure compressors and the low-pressure turbine. The Aerospace Embedded Solutions joint venture, which includes Safran and MTU specialists, will create an electronic engine control system. The engine plays a role in providing the aircraft with cruising speed. The advantages of this aircraft in the form of low visibility, advanced maneuverability, cruising speed, and the presence of sensor drones ahead are clear, but what about weapons? It's planned to use hypersonic air-to-air -air missiles developed under the French ASN-4G project as the main weapon. According to the plans, the drones will carry laser-guided aerial bombs similar to the American GBU-53 munitions. The problem is that the range of the drones may not be sufficient to destroy the target. In addition, their low speed and low maneuverability make them an easy target. One of the leading options is also the idea of equipping the drone with small missiles, such as the 50kg British Brimstone II missile with a range of 60 kilometers and supersonic speed thanks to its rocket engine. We can only wait to watch this ambitious project unfold. 
Will the countries be able to separate from the United States and show their own strength, or will they have to ask for help again? Do you think the French-German-Spanish sixth-generation fighter jet's a good idea? We look forward to hearing your opinion with great interest, and if you enjoyed the video, please support our project by liking and subscribing. We promise to come back to you soon with a new arms analysis to deepen our joint knowledge on this topic.